You want to see the power of automating Google Sheets with App Script? I'm Chanel Greco from Ciparis, and in this video, I'll show you how you can automate Google Sheets with App Script, and it's a follow along example. So, as I'm coding and explaining, you can code yourself and you will automate Google Sheets and use the YouTube API. To automate my YouTube reporting, I created a script that gets the video URLs from a different Google Sheets file. Then with the YouTube API, the stats of these videos are fetched. The stats are written to Google Sheets and ordered by views. For our example, I have stripped this down. So we will be having our URLs in the same file where we're also creating our automation script. I already have a couple of dummy URLs in the file. And now we're creating our main function, which I've named get stats. We're getting our spreadsheet app, the active sheet that is, and we're storing it in the variable of sheet. Then we have to deal with the range. So we need uh, the range where the URLs are saved. We're creating the variable data range, accessing our sheet and getting the method or using the method of get data range. And we're using the method of offset. That is because we do not want to include the header. So the first row with the header that we don't need. Instead, we need only there where the data is saved. So all the URLs in case you're thinking or asking what I've done with get last row and minus one, have a look at the Google app sheet documentation. So then we're getting the values out of that data range, which at the moment contains all the video URLs. Then we're creating a new empty array and a second new empty array. Hmm. What might we be doing with this? We're creating a second function and that underscore means that it's a private method. That means that you can only call that, uh, not method, but function to be more precise from within another function. And we will be passing in two separate parameters for each lets us know, okay, we will be looping over something. We will be looping over an array and on each iteration, we want to push something to that new video URLs array, which is currently empty. And we will then be filling on each separate iteration. And then once we've done that, we will return our video URL. Okay. So somewhere I had a syntax error. I had a red error message. That's because I got mixed up with the brackets, but that being dealt with, we can now go ahead and copy this function and we will be calling it. Yes, go ahead and allow. We will be calling it from within our get stats and we'll be passing in values in video URLs as arrays or as parameters. Now on to the second private function to get current stats. Here again, we will be passing in two parameters for each. Okay. That means again, we will be looping over an array. Mm -hmm. If okay. So that's a conditional meaning we're checking if the video URL that I'm passing in as a parameter is not empty. In that case, we know we have an actual video URL, which we can use. And we're going to use our extract video URL from URL. Hmm. That we haven't seen yet. Well, that means that we will have to create another private method afterwards, which we will be calling here. Now, private methods, this is just, you know, I felt like using them, but you don't have to, you can write just normal methods if you want to here, a second get video details, also a private method, which means we will have to be writing that one as well. Now we're creating 
a variable of title, detailed response. Okay, so here I think I will be accessing a response that the YouTube API is giving me. So that means that uh, we also have to add a function to access the YouTube API. In case you're wondering how I knew this items um, zeroth position dot snippet dot publish that, well, that I all checked on the YouTube API. This is nothing I've simply invented, but I had to look up how to use this. That is always the case when you're using one of Google Google's APIs. You have to check how you're supposed to use it. Otherwise, it just won't do what you expect it to. So you already see title, publish date, publish date format it. What am I doing there? Well, I want my date to be in a specific format. That's why I'm passing in that publish date and creating a new date. Then the views, which equals the view count from the YouTube API. I think that pretty much says it all and the likes, and now the comments. So, okay, we already can identify from this, this we're gonna store the response from the YouTube API for every single video in these variables. And then what do we do with it? Okay, so that's the current stats push array, okay. Ah, okay, so we're adding in these separate variables into an array because that's one of what's going to enable us to then write this array to a specific range on our Google Sheet. And now we say that we want to return this current stats array. So let's go ahead and save, which by the way is always a good idea. Uh, give the project a name as I just did now. Very good. So we've created this private function and now we're adding it to our main get stats function because we want to call it when our automation script is running. So before we saw that in the get current stats method, we're calling two private methods. These obviously we have to write now. Okay, so this is to extract our video ID. So on the whole row that we have, the video ID is only in one specific column or in one specific cell on each row. And we're identifying this and we're also, we're splitting the video, uh, the video URL itself because we won't be needing the whole thing. We only need a certain section. How did I know how to split it like so? Well, actually this is a code snippet I got from the Google Apps Script Developers Solution Gallery. So that's something I got from there and it serves my purpose. So I'm just reusing it here. Okay, so we've got that. And now we will return our video ID to then be used in the API. So we have another function to write and we've named this get video details. This again is a private function, which we already saw that we will be calling and what does this take care of? Well, this handles the whole YouTube API calling. So we see here this, we've created uh, a part of uh, this, we will be passing in as a parameter when we're accessing the YouTube API. So you see here on line number 51, youtube.videos.list, and then we have to say which part and which video ID. And here's where we we're using the video ID, which we extracted before in the previous function. And then we will be returning the response from the YouTube API. Okay, so, so far what we've done is we've gotten all the information. Now the last or the second last step is to actually write these new stats or these stats that we've received. For that, we will create a new data range, offset it,
We're using the current stats.length property of the array to know the length. There you go, and we will be setting the values. So if you're wondering, what are we offsetting here? Well, if we write offset like so, the method, we're offsetting the row. No, excuse me, the column, not the row. Why are we doing that? Well, because we already have the video URLs in the first column. We don't want to be overwriting that. Instead, we just want to add our new information that we received from the YouTube API. So that takes care of the writing the stats. And as you saw, I added that private method up to the main function. And now, and this is just a bonus because I want my report to look a certain way. I want the cells to be formatted in a certain way. And that's why I will, or I've created this private function do formatting. Here I'm getting specific ranges. So if you are adding further columns in your example, then you have to make sure to adapt the ranges here. So we're setting the number format. We're setting the date format. Now this is the European date format, the way that I'm used to reading dates. Then we're getting a range again because we want to sort this range. So this is all our data in the sheet, except obviously the header that we don't have to sort. And we'll be sorting according to column four ascending. So if I'm not mistaken, that should be um, sorting by the views, which makes sense. You probably want to have the videos with the most views all the way on the top. They're adding the private function and to our main get stats method. And now the last thing for us to do is to make this automation script a bit more accessible. So we don't always want to have to enter the script editor to run it. Instead, let's add a nice little button that we can click on and that then runs our code. That's what I'm doing here. And you'll notice on open is the default function that you do that you use to do this. So the naming here of get stats, get stats in YouTube, that is just what I've defined, but it could actually be anything you like. Okay. For the first time, I've decided to run the code here from the script editor, review permission, that's all good. And then bam, hmm, there's an error message. On line number three, what went wrong? Can you see the error? So it's telling me somehow create menu is not a function. Ah, because I got that wrong. So there was no valid UI, which it then could create a menu on. Okay, that looks better, complete. There you see the button. Okay, so let me go ahead and click on it. Oops, YouTube is not defined. Okay. Hmm. Well, you remember, we're using the YouTube API. Now this is something extra. This is something we have to add. Let's go ahead and add it. Let's run our code again. So this is sometimes how you automate. You click, you fail. Hmm, still something with YouTube missing. Let's have another look. Ah, okay, let's add that too. Let's saving, or it is saving. Let's go back, let's execute again. And I think that looks better. Okay, so no error message so far. Now it's asking Jane examples permission. We allow, it's running the script. And then what's gonna happen? Nothing? Oh uh, yeah, because when it asks for permission, it stops the execution of the script. There you go. Perfect. So now we have our stats. While you're on YouTube, why don't you go ahead and check out my other Google Apps Script video tutorials. 
And would you mind subscribing to my YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button below? Because every week I publish new video tutorials about Google Workspace and how to automate the apps within this suite with Google Apps Script. And I would not miss, want you to miss out on any of those video tutorials.